their below bare minimum behavior still allows them access to women, access to the prize in a patriarchal society because that's what women are. Women are the prize. She's so frustrated. She's so alone. She's mad crazy. Women are not the prize. Men are not the prize. No one is the prize. Fall in love with the consciousness. There is no prize. There's falling in love with the consciousness and building a beautiful life with a healthy person. Our status symbols for the success of men in a patriarchal society. So whenever men have a monopoly on women, women become participation trophies. And the thing is, women are not participation trophies. We are the prize. It takes a lot to access a woman in the- Oh my God, I'm gonna- Women are not the trophy, but they are the prize. Girl, make it make sense. This is why men in the menosphere are so confused. So you want to be the prize, but you don't want to be the trophy? Make it make sense. But unfortunately, I love this bubble is so funny. Honestly, her and Myron should date. Her and Myron fall in love right now, have babies. So lacking in introspection. It's so shallow. You might as well date Myron because you're his twin. You might as well date Myron because you are literally proving everything he says correct. Correct. Who do you think is a prize in a relationship, men or women? I mean, a woman for a lot of reasons, just because like, that like helps the one man. one person has to have higher value in the relationship let's keep it a thousand so who is the prize in the relationship the man or the woman i think the woman the woman okay mm -hmm. i say the man the man? the man provides okay repeat after me the least men can do is pay whenever you allow a man in your presence you are being used one way or another that's why you can't allow just about any man in your presence you need to be selective you have to set high barriers of access and standards for yourself because you are to be accessed you are the prize you are creation i want you guys to always be in the position of dominance when you deal with women because that's when women act right when they are scared of losing you that's when you get the that's when you get your dick sucked. That's when they respect you. That's when they wait on your uh, on your instruction, etc. That's what you want from women. Okay, you need them to con. If a girl feels like she's equal to you, or worse yet, better than you, that's when the disrespect comes. Men are the fucking prize. I'm telling you that men are never your friends for your own safety. This whole male friendship thing with women is a scam that they run on us so that they can keep accessing us and draining us for free. And we spoiled girlies are putting an end to the scam. I'm not saying get rid of all of these men in your life, but you need to develop some boundaries, okay? All these guy friends that you think are your friends, maybe they're just acquaintances. Maybe they're business contacts, industry contacts. And once you recategorize these people in your life, all involvement they have with you has to fall into the labels that you give them. They can declare that they like you in that way and then they can date you properly. But this whole covert nice guy thing, it disadvantages you, drains you, and endangers you. Hey bestie, welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group podcast where we talk about how to get that bag while also securing your own bag. I'm your host Elle and let's get into it. On today's episode, we are talking about the guy friend purge and why women are ditching male friendships. We will also cover how friendships with men tend to disadvantage women and endanger women. Do you think a woman having male friends is the same as a man having female friends? Um, I think it depends on the context. For Go sure, ahead. because I mean, especially, I mean, what is a friend, right? Living in a city like Miami, like, yeah, you got friends, right? But I mean, there's a difference between real genuine friendships, like people that you've known, people you're comfortable with, people who don't look at you that way. So let me ask you a question. Do you, do you prefer to hang out? You're saying you have guy friends. I mean, I'm coming to the conclusion, you correct me if I'm wrong, that you prefer to have guy friends over female friends? Uh, the, the, the people who I already have established in my life yeah. are mostly guys, but okay. when I go out in a new environment, like I'll probably speak to girls more than guys. Yes. But my, my actual best friends and the people I've been closest to in my life, if I was to count them up, it's a handful of people. Most of them are guys. So you prefer, and, and yeah. I, I, so you prefer guy friends? Yeah, I do. Okay. So, cause here's my thing. This might be a controversial take, but I genuinely think that women don't offer much in friendships. Uh, I think men offer way more utility because as a woman, when you have a guy friend, he can offer you boyfriend energy, whether you guys are intimate or not, protection, rational advice. You can be yourself and not have to worry about feelings and emotions and say what's on your mind because you don't have to worry about some passive aggressive retribution from him later on. Sure. Um, but women don't offer necessarily offer as much utility back in return i agree most of the time absolutely so, but, but not every woman is the same and i will course. say that i've definitely through my life experiences the things that i've been through the, the different careers that i've i feel like i have utility and well I, friendships right where women are with guys 
almost always often benefit the woman more than it benefits the guys. And I would be willing to bet that those guys, if given the opportunity to have sex with you, would. You know what? And that's what some guy waiting. friends have said to me as yeah. well. They're like, you know what? They just secretly want to sleep with you. I really hope that's not the case. Men who pour into the women around them, their girlfriends, wives, mothers, sisters, they are so blessed. They become so successful. It's because when they have women rooting for them, they are tapped into the source. By gaining the support of women, he has already won. And all he has to do is translate that success into the physical world. His success is now inevitable. Here's what we're gonna do, all right? We're gonna watch Mena Festel again. I was highly critical of her video before and I'd only seen one video of her. And I thought to myself, Brittany, we need to give this girl another chance. So let's watch her again and see how we feel about one of her latest videos and we'll have a conversation about it. Uh, Women are leaving men is the title, which coincides with the last TikTok we just watched on stream. And I thought it would kind of like flow perfectly. It's called Married Single Mothers Di Di Divesting No Fault Divorced. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this going. Women don't enjoy divorce. Women risk so much getting into marriages. Women risk so much getting out of marriages. Women risk so much. You know how I feel about music. Period. And it isn't too much to ask the men who benefit from us risking everything to compensate us for those risks, to recognize. I hate it already. Frick, I'm so judgmental. I am so judgmental. You, nobody knows how to be on a team. This language is so anti-teamwork. It's so anti-teamwork. Can you imagine joining a baseball team and talking like this? It makes no sense. And account for our risks. By default, you want to give, give, give. By default, we are the source. You know what happens to the source? Things get taken out of the source. You are the source. That's why it takes conscious effort for you to be in receiving energy. Because you need to be. By default, we give, we nurture, we create. And all these things we do will deplete us if we are surrounded by people who continually, constantly drain us. Damn, yo, damn. This feels red pill for women. Ugh, maybe it is actually. I want to give her another chance though. Let's see if we can get through it again. Let's see if we can get through it again. She could be right. I just talked to a woman about this and it is true that as a female, I will say, I think ahead more than my brothers do like more than the men in my life. Actually, that's why I love my husband. Cause he thinks ahead. He thinks ahead, but most of the time when it comes to people, I feel like as a girl, I've always been expected to think ahead. Think about people needing lunch. Think about people needing help, needing this, needing this versus guys kind of just like live in the moment in a way because they don't have to think about people's needs ahead of time. Um, but I also think that's like the the um, job role. So I noticed in my relationship, I think less ahead than my partner does now because I'm just working. So I think a lot about work and money and I think a lot about career and our bills and I think a lot about like that stuff and he thinks a lot about like what are we doing tomorrow what are we eating what do you need me to do so it's less gender and I feel like more the role you're taking on and I do wonder if that is something we're willing to have a conversation about because again when you're the breadwinner and you're not primarily responsible for the house and groceries and stuff like that I do notice myself thinking less ahead I do think of I think I'm more focused on like what am I doing today for work so maybe it's less gender and more gender role. Yes. And that's what clueless husbands do. Hey, bestie. Welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group podcast where we talk about how to get that bag while also securing your own. Is there going to be music the whole time? Because my neurodivergency can't. I can't watch a video with music the on. I mean, I'll watch a video essay, but a podcast with music in the background, this got to stop, right? I'm your host, Elle, and let's get into it. On today's episode, we are talking about married single mothers and why oh, women no. initiate majority of divorces. We will also cover free dating market theory and why men wanting to ban no-fault divorce is a stupid idea. Now, all that sounds doom and gloomy, but I have a positive, heartwarming video for you in the end, so stay I'm sorry, is the, is the music going to stay on? Stay tuned. But before we get into it, I need you to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you never miss a spoiled girly episode. With that being said, let's get into it. It's okay, it's okay. 
the eye roll I rolled when I saw that video. And like we always say around here, whenever we watch videos like that, it could be staged, okay? It could be a trend and everyone's doing it. But the reason why these videos go viral, the reason why these videos get attention is because they are conveying a sentiment that a lot of people hold. A lot of women feel like the mother in that video. A lot of women feel like... <laughs> How the F was I muted? When did I even mute myself? I'm really lucky my dad loved being a dad. That's what I was saying. Like, I'm really lucky my dad loved being a dad. That that yapping look uh, passionate, it was passionate, okay? My dad loved being a dad. We're really lucky that my dad loved being a dad. He was present. He was in the home. He worked six days a week as an entrepreneur, but came home every evening, hung out with us on the weekends. Every time I see a dad, a tired dad, Instagram or a meme or TikTok, and the mom always doing everything, remember that that's the life you chose. That's the life you chose. And I want people to understand you have so much power in your life. That's the life you chose. So if you realize your husband isn't pulling his weight or you feel like he's not being an active dad or if you have the conversation and then the problem is, and I assume she's going to say it, when you have the conversation, it can lead to divorce. And that's the thing, right? That's the thing. You know? You know, so that's the thing is like, if you feel like your partner isn't being active, you can have the conversation, but often it can lead to divorce. And that's, that's what's tough. You know, I'm really glad my dad liked being a dad, you know, and I'm glad my mom liked being a mom. They really liked being parents. They weren't perfect at it, obviously, but they really liked doing it, you know, like they're doing everything in the home. Like they cannot even have a moment to themselves to eat in peace. Like mom's doing everything. And what's dad doing? So there's a reason why videos like that go viral, but it doesn't make it any less infuriating, to be honest. This is what we call a married single mother, legally married to a man, but with the responsibilities of a single mother. Many women who divorce after being married single mothers, they find that they were doing everything alone anyway. And all the man did instead of lighten the load is to add more work. These are the struggles of modern motherhood. You're expected to be a 1950s housewife while also being a 2010s girl boss. Not only are women expected to still be creators of life, nurturers, muses, oh no. We are also expected to be providers too. Because this is the equality we fought for. At least that's what they tried so hard to indoctrinate us with. And a lot of women fell for it. A lot of us fell for it. And a lot of pikmishas are still preaching this from on high about how they are the evolved woman. They are the archetype of a good woman. The reality of 2010's girl boss feminism is we were taking responsibilities and tasks off of men's plates and putting it on ours. If anything, the patriarchy pulled a fast one on us and we fell for it. Congrats. They really well, sold us this brand of female. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was around in the 2010s. The idea was going to be that women could work and be amazing mothers and that the husbands would also work and be amazing dads. When I was a professional nanny and I worked with high, earn high income earner families, one of the things that I recognized is that they both worked and both struggled to be present parents, but a lot of the low did end up more on the female, though because I was in a progressive city like Seattle, the men really tried to. Most of the time, the parents I worked for were actually very good at it. This was the feminism of 2010, which would be um, our 2012, 2014. I was nannying around 2014, 2014 to 18. I was nannying in Seattle as a professional with like high earn income earner families. All of them tried really hard, but both of them were burned out working and they were working in high income earner jobs like doctors and working for healthcare and working for they were like, OK, so again. My issue is that we're selling a um, <clears throat> no sleep net needed dream to people and we need sleep. We need help. We need a village. We need something. And so again, like one of the reasons I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have a kid is because of my lifestyle. I won't have a village. And I just think it's not reasonable to have a kid without that village. But I understand that some people feel like they can do it. I don't know how y'all do it, but I don't think I'm your girl. Mm -mm. And, you know, it's a thing. Empowerment, which not so secretly benefited fake patriarchs. And not only that, they employed pygmishas to do their bidding. They got the pygmishas to police their own so that we would all toe the line and allow this exploitation to continue for generations to come. No, 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 meal tickets. We're equal. She's so dramatic. Again, the other side of this is that, like, men don't, men are not smart enough to create the conspiracy. Say it with me. Men on a whole are not smart enough to create a conspiracy to fall for it like this. And females, like she said, it was the feminism. Women did it because it was working for that generation and those people. There is a dream. There is a dream 
of being a person who works and is an amazing mother and an amazing father. So tell me right now, are we saying it actually is impossible and that the conservatives were correct and that women or men should be the stay at home partner? Hmm? <laughs> what are we really saying? What are we saying? Because all the people I know who had working mothers and working fathers really did wish that they spent more time with their families. Even though they were great and gave them a great life, you know what I mean? They really do say that one of the things they wish they had more of is time with their parents. That's why when you watch, Asmongold just covered this like boys activist group. Studies are showing boys don't want your paychecks, they want your time. Kids don't want your money. They want your presence. They want your presence. But the d issue is that you can run the risk of becoming like only a mom or only a dad. So my farm brother and his wife, they have four kids. She, I told you guys, she gets overstimulated, of course. Mom, 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 mom. And she goes like this. She goes, go outside, hang out with the trees or go see your dad because he works on the property. They have like 20 acres. And the kids will go over to my brother and they're like, mom says we should come hang out with you. And he's like, leave your mother alone. Give her a second. She's a person, you know. They're always reminding the kids that like, yes, your mom, I know you want to be with her and you love her. And I know you maybe even want to be with your dad when he's working and you can't, but you got to learn boundaries, right? Because you're raising little adults. So again, I really feel like she, this girl so far, she has a habit of like pointing the finger just like the men do. If you, Stop pointing the finger. We're all the Spider-Man meme, right? Like what life do you want? Make that life. What life do you want? Make that life work for you. Ignore everyone who says it's not working for you. If it really is, if it's really working and you're healthy and it's working, do it. Because the world is so unhealthy and so lonely and so bored that they certainly don't know what it looks like when they have it, right? So again, I feel like this girl, the only thing I don't like about her content is she tends to blame people instead of saying like, how do I then have the life I want? Which fair, I remember being in this bubble too. So I'm going to tell you, that's the difference. Have the life you want. Find a partner that's going to vibe with you and be your teammate. Well now, I'm going to go to college to be a gold digger. All this to say, no wonder why mothers are struggling nowadays. One of the biggest struggles of modern motherhood- Oh, wait. Albina says, bro, I'm so out, of the, um, so out of topic, but just had an argument with my BF. No, this is on topic. After watching a random video on Insta, the question was, who goes first, wife, daughter, or mom? And I said, wife, and he said, child goes first. Wait, do you mean like in a life-death situation? Like in a life, what do you mean? Hold on, wait. Who goes first? Do you mean like in terms of priority? Because this is interesting. Like, do you mean, okay, because like in my relationship, I think this is what you mean. Tell me if I'm right. In my relationship, it goes us first, then our kids, then the animals, right? And the idea being the priority in a healthy situation. Obviously, ultimately, as parents, our kids come first if we had kids. But our kids only come first in a life and death situation. In regular life, we have to come first so we can be healthy in our relationship to be healthy for our kids, because if we became just parents and lost ourselves, we'd become roommates and then our marriage would deteriorate. Like it wouldn't be a marriage anymore if we became full-time nannies. Being a parent also means being a spouse. Like not always, but in a marriage, right? If you're, if you're married and you have a kid. So like your kids are going to grow up and leave you. Hopefully you should make them independent people. And so for me, if this is what you're talking about, right? It's my partner first, then my kids, then the animals. But ultimately, because the animals and the kids are dependent on us, their safety and health comes first, but not their, not like, not above the marriage. Does, but also like, you know what I mean? Like Indiana Jones is a cat and me and my partner prioritize her so much, right? But it's not the same as saying like, you prioritize the weak when you are strong, but if you're failing, you know what I mean? You and your partner have to build that trust again. You have to you have to keep that foundation there. The marriage is the foundation to being a good parent and a good pet owner, in my opinion, if we're looking at it like in the family unit, you know, if you're looking at it in the family unit. But again, that's just my bubble. So that's my bubble, right? My bubble is you prioritize the health of the marriage so you can be healthy parents. But so, like, again, that's my bubble, my kind of people. 
You know what I mean? Not everyone is like that. But is this pressure, this standard to still work while doing all or majority of the domestic labor, whether it be physical, mental, or emotional. But let's say that you do become a stay-at-home mom. You still do everything. You create life, you nurture, you become the muse, you become the domestic labor. There's some men who still have the audacity to think that you are living off of their good graces, that you should be so thankful that you are a stay-at-home wife, like he's providing for you, as if that wasn't the bare minimum. I don't wanna be that person who de-influences you from marriage because it can be a very beautiful thing, especially with the right man. A good marriage will definitely add to your life. And good marriages are also a net positive to society. Like, we need good marriages. But the thing is, you want to be able to have good marriages and I am arming you with the discernment to not get into a theoretically a lifelong contract with someone who will make you suffer. So that's the goal of this video. The internet is so black and white. I get that this is leisure watching, but can you like rub two brain cells together and realize that there's nuance? You can talk about the downsides of one thing without being 100% against one thing. Okay, amen girl, damn. Okay, well, let's go. Okay, like these are your brain cells, like you can rub them together. You're welcome. I know it's not fun to watch videos like that, but it's information. And what do we always say around here? Don't get mad, get paid. Now you know. Now you know that there's men out there who think that because he provides your domestic labor is worthless, that it is. Yeah, but like you, first of all, who calls it domestic labor? That's the one the red flag. Red flag if they call it domestic labor. You're a mom, you're a dad, you're a stay at home parent. I feel like the red flag is calling it domestic labor. I think it's a red flag when women say I have unpaid labor because I'm a mom. I think that's a red flag. When people call being a parent unpaid labor, I I'm going to that's not being a parent, dude. Your your job is being a parent. That should be like the ultimate job. It's not unpaid labor. So I think that's the first red flag is a privilege for you to be able to do this for him without realizing that it is also a privilege for him that you are doing all this domestic labor for him at a discount. If you had to quantify, categorize, and charge for your labor in a professional sense, if you wanted a W2, a 1099 for all the things that you do at home for this man and the family, he couldn't afford you. But because you love him, because you're in a marriage with him, you do it for him, okay? So I have this beef Rewind. with without realizing that it is also a privilege for him that you are doing all this domestic labor for him at a discount. If you had to quantify, categorize, and charge for your labor in a professional sense, if you wanted a W2, a 1099 for all- That's the problem. Parenting isn't a W-2 job. It's not a 1099 job. It is a spiritual thing. Being a parent, being a good parent is like a spiritual, like I'm trying to use like, it's more than a job. A job is something you do to make money to do what you really want to do. Being a parent is a job, but it's like a spiritual job. It's like a calling. It's very, very profound and beautiful. And if you're meant to be a parent, you should be a parent. Like if you're really going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, the way she talks about it is like way too capitalistic, you know? Brittany, do you believe someone who would be a good husband or a wife or partner would also be a good parent? No. Obviously good is subjective and they are necessarily the same, but is there overlap? Yes and no. Maybe. No. They're different criteria, but I think a good sign of a good parent is also a good partner. So if you're going to be a good parent, I assume you would be a good partner and that doesn't that doesn't always work though because the individual is such a consciousness so some people are great at being parents and really bad at being in partnerships which is why sometimes when divorce happens it can weirdly be better because they're much better as single and like you know what i'm saying so i'm open to the nuance of the fact that generally if you're going to be in a couple if you're going to be in a couple it would be a good sign of being a good parent if you're a good partner if you're single and you're not in a couple then you can be a single, singularly good parent without being a good partner, right? So, you know. All the things that you do at home for this man and the family, he couldn't afford you. But because you love him, because you're in a marriage with him, you do it for him, okay? See? So when See, she fucks it up. This is what I'm saying about bubbles. Yes, yeah, it's a lifestyle discord. It's a lifestyle. This is, the, this, is the, this is why she's just on the other side of the fresh and fit bubble. So fresh and fit go... I'm paying for you. I'm housing you. I'm paying your bills. I'm doing your hair and your nails. I'm giving my kids a life. You're my unpaid labor. Go. But it's not unpaid because look at all the stuff I'm doing for you. She says, hey, I'm your unpaid labor. So like you better realize how good you have it, right? She's the other side of it. The real answer is none of this is unpaid labor. All of this is a labor of love. This is supposed to be a labor of love. Parenthood, partnership it's a labor of love it's a labor of commitment and wholesome energy it's a commitment of health it's a commitment of joy it's a commitment of beautiful things 
beautiful things. And so when you do this, when you say it's unpaid labor, when you say if this was a 1099, when you say like I'm paying your bill so you should worship me, you are doing the same toxic thing that you hate from the other side. And that's why bubbles going to bubble, right? Right? Bubbles going to bubble, humans going to human, PS get your merch. Like that's the dilemma we're seeing. She was so close but so far. You see what I say when I was in a bubble? I used to think like this was a good argument. Like you would think this is a good, it's not. It's a bubbled argument. It's lacking this, like Discord said, this is a lifestyle. This is a labor of love. I have this beef with men who feel like doing the bare minimum, providing for his family, makes him entitled to put down the woman's labor like that, to put down the value that she brings to the family like that. Not a vibe. And I it's want not you a vibe. to- No, she's right. It's not a vibe for your husband or wife to, to see you as not good enough. But at the same time, like you guys need to be on a team you need to be teammates. You can't use each other as competition. You can't be looking at each other like, hey, you don't pull your own weight. It's more like, hey, as a team, what direction are we going in? Because right now we're not going to make the playoffs, bro. Mm. With this narrative, though, it's like they're in competition with each other. I do this, so you do this, so I do this, so you do this. Mm -mm. That for that vibe, that energy before you marry someone. And I have beef with you, too. Okay, you, I know you have internalized the devaluation of your own work, too. You believe them, can you wake up? For a lot of the girlies, it's too late, okay? Maybe you have to start over. But for the girlies who aren't at that stage yet, like, I so need you to wake up, okay? Like, wake up. You have so much inherent worth and value. The work that you do, the value that you bring, they have value and worth. And you need to find someone who has high perception of your value and worth. And you need to wake up to that before you start dating. Because God forbid you encounter a man who gaslights you into thinking that you, your work, your gifts are not worth anything. And God forbid you believe it. Bestie, wake up. Okay, I have like so many beefs with the world. So we're just gonna talk about all my beef. I have beef with this idea that men help around the house. I don't like that term. I really don't. Especially in 50-50 households. If you're in a 50-50 relationship, the man is not helping around the house. It's his house too. In a 50-50 relationship, when you are managing the man's housework and having to plan- That's a problem. I don't have a 50-50 relationship. I have a 100-100. That's the problem. I don't do no 50-50. We do 100-100. We don't do 50-50. That doesn't work. You got to do 100-100. My parents don't do 50-50. They do 100-100. You're only bringing 50% of your energy to the game? You're going to lose, bitch. And log and remind him of his tasks. And then if he doesn't do his tasks, you're the nag. You're the bad guy for not feeding into his delulu delusions that he is a king in his 50-50 household. In a corporate setting, you'd have to pay a manager for that. But the earlier you get comfortable with categorizing, quantifying, and charging for your labor, the earlier you put an end to your own exploitation. Watch this class if that is a foreign concept Girl. to you. Okay, so she's talking to a very specific bubble, which is true. She's right. If you're talking to that bubble, I would say go a step further. I'm going to encourage you to go a step further that you put in 100-100. 100% effort into your marriage, 100% into parenting, 100%. You put 100% in. We do what it takes to make the team win, both of us, 100%. We do our 100% best to make the team win. The team is the marriage, okay? So again, 100% into our kids, 100% into us, 100% into everything. 100% in my job, 100% in my marriage. We put 100 freaking percent in. I understand if it's a provider relationship, it makes sense that the person who doesn't work outside of the home, the home is their main sphere. So I get that. And in some cases, the man makes enough to outsource the domestic labor to people other than his female partner, as in the case of kept wives. Watch this video if you want to learn how kept wife life is the cheat code to life. And good for them, good for the kept wives, but not all men can afford that, okay, obviously. So if you're in a 50-50 relationship, 50-50 marriage, if the housework falls on you majority of the time, you are being exploited. If mm. you find... Magic Dragon says I'm guilty of sometimes seeing stay-at-home moms as not as hardworking as working moms. It's not exactly related, but it's a bias I'm having to work on. I was raised by a single mom, so I saw the world. You know, can I be real with you? I do think working moms are more stressed than stay-at-home moms because it's it's not as easy to work and to be like a, a parent and be present. And I think fathers really miss out on opportunities with their kids because they're working. But I will say stay-at-home moms have it harder. Um, not harder. They have it hard because every like it's always difficult. But I think they have it easier in a lot of ways as well. And so I would rather be definitely like a, a – like, well, what's a working mom? Just to clarify. Because, again, if I had a child, my partner would be the primary stay-at-home partner because I would be working like seven days a week like I'm doing now probably. And I would see my kid and we'd have like maybe one day a week off to hang out. But I also work from home so it's easy because then I can see him or her, or them, 
So it's also easier in that way. But a working parent who has to leave the home, who actually has to like leave the home, I think that's hard on everybody, no matter the gender. But I think it is more difficult when you're fighting traffic, you're fighting stress, you have to work with a boss and then you come home. It's a different kind of stress. You know, it's a different kind of stress, to be fair. Find yourself performing managerial duties because you're better at it. It comes more naturally to you. I need you to know that you have fallen victim to male weaponized incompetence directed towards tasks that they have deemed feminine and are thus low value labor. I need you to know that you're with a man who doesn't value you because he doesn't value the labor that you do. He thinks he's too good for whatever you're doing. There's nothing empowering about being with a man who so openly and proudly exploits you. There's nothing empowering about being with a man who so openly drains you, your essence, and your bank account. Speaking of draining your essence- I asset, mean, I agree with that. I also think there's no point to being with a woman who sees being a mother as unpaid labor that is owed a paycheck. I think that's weird. Like, but then again, I share my money. We don't have our money. Like, we don't have his money and my money. We have our money. We share money. We share everything. So, like, it's our money. Like, I'm like, oh, babe, we made this much this month. Even though I'm the breadwinner, I'm like, I'm. we made this much this month. Hello? And so let's get into why women let themselves go while in a marriage. And then, glowing up post-divorce. We already talked about how a woman's appearance is indicative of the type of man that she's with, so if you missed that class, watch it here. This post-divorce glow-up phenomenon is so common nowadays that it has become a topic of discussion. Particularly, ex-husbands complaining about okay, how- this is really important though. The post-breakup glow-up is not because you're dating men or women. It's because you're dating toxic and you are toxic. When you get healthier, you glow up. When you get better, you glow up. This is about toxicity within the self. This is not about gender, but this is a true phenomenon, right? There is a true phenomenon that women do really great after getting out of toxic relationships. I'm one of them. I got so downhill in one of my relationships and I got so much better after, but it was because not that I was dating a man, but I was in a toxic relationship and I was there thinking it would work, it would work, it would work, it would work, right? So. It's not about gender. It's literally about, it's, it's about toxicity. It's about being healthy. And that's why your relationship, you can glow up together. Like my partner and I are always glowing up together and I love it. I love when we like work out. I love like when we see it. I love when his parents are like, oh, I can see the difference. So I'm like, <laughs> thank you. Like I love glowing up with my partner. And a big part of that is a reflection of our healthy relationship. If my parents saw us or if his parents saw us and they could see us getting worse, they're going to be rightfully concerned that, oop, are they like going in a bad direction? They want to see a glow up. We want to see a glow up because we're healthy and we're maintaining health and we're looking good and we're feeling good, you know? their ex-wives get skinnier, prettier, and happier after their divorce. Why didn't she look like that when we were married? Now she loses all the weight when we're divorced. Y'all are asking the wrong questions. The question is, what is wrong with me that the moment I get out of someone's life, their life improves? What did you expect? You didn't make space yeah, for her. Yeah, but remember, she was a woman who was in that relationship, so she's just as toxic. Remember, like, in order to be in a relationship with somebody who's that toxic, you would have had to have had a part of you that justified being there in the first place. Healthy people don't date toxic people unless there's a part of them that like is toxic enough to date them. In my opinion, I think healthy people stay away from toxic people because they're like, ah, mm -mm, nope, nope. Now you might be healthy and naive ish. So you might fall for a toxic person, which is also a possibility. Keep her glow while married. What but in order to stay in that relationship, when you see the red flags means you've become a person that normalizes toxicity. You expect when you are draining her and pouring nothing back into her. You are literally siphoning, harvesting her energy, her essence. And then you have the audacity to complain. Because remember, just because you normalize toxicity doesn't mean it's healthy, right? That she doesn't look at you with eyes of adoration and admiration. You didn't give her the proper amount of time, energy, resources, encouragement to keep herself healthy, glowing, desirable. What did you expect? And I'm not saying that women are agency-less creatures who blow with the winds of the whims of men but women can only handle so much. I keep telling you that you need to focus on being in your receiving energy. Do you know why? Because I know you, by default, you wanna give, give, give. By default, we are the source. You know what happens to the source? Things get taken out of the source. You are the source. By default, you give. That's why it takes conscious effort for you to be in receiving energy, because you need to be. By default, we give, we nurture, we create. And all these things we do will deplete us if we are surrounded by people who continually, constantly drain us. And that's what clueless husbands do. And more insidious, some men do it on purpose. Some men keep their wives unhappy, unhealthy, ugly, intentionally. These men want True. you dependent on- True. But some women do this to men because it's not about gender. It's about toxicity. Toxicity. 
it's not about gender. Gender is such a construct. It is literally not about gender. It's not about gender. It is about values. It's about toxicity. It's not about gender. It cannot be about gender. It is such a reductive perspective to think it's about gender. It is not about gender. As much as I love to play misandrist on this channel, it is not about gender. It is literally about toxicity versus healthy. It is literally about character and values. It is not about gender. It's not men are doing this to women and women are doing this to men. As long as your narrative is men versus women, as long as that is your narrative, like you already, you've already lost the battle. You've already lost the battle of healthy because it's not about gender. Gender is a fucking construct. On their validation. So they break down your self-esteem. This is why I have beef with people who keep trying to tell women that looks don't matter. It doesn't matter. It does. Our outward appearance matters to how we perceive ourselves. It does. Okay. There's some people who are way more evolved who truly don't care, who truly don't think that way. But for us regular, regular human beings, for us regular, regular women, it is true. It is true that our appearance ties with how we perceive ourselves. And it is also true that how others perceive us ties with how we perceive ourselves. That is uh, human nature. So these men- Okay, hold on. Um, hmm. Huh, hmm. Like, yes and no, but also, like, you can be in love- I don't know. I feel like this is a, she's a little too competitive. Like, I think she sees her partner as someone she has to compete with. Probably because she felt like everyone she's dated has competed with her. So, you know, there's something to that, right? If you always have competed with partners, it's always going to feel like you're in competition when you're dating. But it also sounds like her lifestyle doesn't exactly attract the healthiest people either. So, like, what are you doing wrong, girly? Like, what are you also doing wrong? You know what I mean? What are you doing to, like, because this is just, like, literally fresh and fit, but the opposite, right? She is literally the, what is it, pink pill? You guys call it pink pill? I think Abba and Preach called it pink pill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And they keep you unattractive. They sabotage all your efforts to get healthy and fit. Or they penalize you. They tell you that, really, you're putting on makeup? You look like a... Wait, has she been unhealthy yet? Because it's unhealthy and destructive. It's not about gender. That's up for. You dress like a SLUT. A lot of women have had experiences with men like that. And I so hope that you never marry one of those. I so hope that you don't even let men like that breathe the same air as you. These men keep you unattractive as a protective measure from attention from other men. Because God forbid you think that you're because desirable. God forbid that you think you have a chance out there in the dating market when you leave them. God forbid you wake up to your own inherent worth and value. These men will ensure that you feel undesirable. Ooh, she's kind of feeding into their narrative though. See, she just did it. God forbid you think you have a place in the dating market after you break up with him. Yeah, she, yeah, man, ooh, she got trauma, bro. Desirable, unworthy of better treatment. But I'm telling you this now, you are worthy of better because you have so much to offer and the right man will compensate you for all that you offer him. I swear, if you're glowing down when you're with a man, he's not the one, okay? If you allow a man into your life, you're- The right man compensates you for all you have to offer. Does nobody fall in love anymore? Jesus Christ. I'm gonna go tell my husband, hey, do I compensate you for all that you're worth? Like, what is this language, bro? What are we in a business? Don't get me wrong. Like, we are being reasonable about our love, right? Like, we are both responsible. So being in love makes sense on the resume, but girl girl your quality of life needs to increase okay not decrease bottom line is no wonder women have post-divorce glow-ups getting away from a man who drains you of your essence does that let's talk about this women initiate majority of divorces this is an alarming revelation to a lot of people especially men for some reason and it's alarmed them so much that they are calling for a ban on no-fault divorces but first what is yeah because no men are weak gender is not about gender this group of people that don't want no-fault divorces they're toxic and unhealthy that's all it is. It's that simple. People who don't believe in no-fault divorce, in some part of them, is toxic in some way. They're riding on fear. They're letting fear win. They're not being reasonable. They're being, you know, jealous and afraid and whatever it is. So obviously that's insane. But on the same front, right, women that willy-nilly talk about getting divorced very easily like, because he didn't, what, buy you the thing you wanted or quote unquote what she used the word, compensate you for your work. What does that mean, girl? And her support group is called like the princess or spo no, spoiled girly support group. Is she the kind of woman that literally wants a guy to pay her bills? 
Because I'm so lost on that. Is she the kind of girl that literally wants a man to pay her bills, but then is ranting about, like, what kind of a woman wants a, expects a man to pay her bills? Like, my, my sister-in-law, who's a stay-at-home mom, she doesn't think, oh, Farm Brother is going to pay my bills. She thinks, yeah, as a team, like, this is what's best for our family and the joy that we find together through Christ is like, I will take care of our kids, you will take care of the business, and we will take care of our family together. Like, do you get what I'm saying? There's, like, is she the kind of woman? I can't figure it out. Like, has she, has anyone watched her content enough? Does she expect a man to pay for her? Because, like, cringe, bro. No fault divorce. No fault divorce is the dissolution of a marriage that does not require a showing of wrongdoing by either party. All 50 states in the United States allow no fault grounds for divorce. However, only 15 states are considered true no fault states where couples can only file on no fault grounds. California was the first to adopt no fault divorce laws. It eliminated the requirement of proving fault, allowing couples to cite irreconcilable differences as the sole grounds for divorce. This shift simplified the divorce process as it no longer necessitates the presentation of evidence or allegations of misconduct. I'm not gonna sit here and celebrate divorce and say it's the best thing since Wonder Bread. I know it is a sad, painful, traumatizing life. Mmm, bash with the super chat. In her mind, the right man has a 401k and stock options with the marriage certificate. Also compensate for labor. Labor, miss the sound like a sugar, misses sound like a sugar baby. Yeah, she sounds a little bit like a sugar baby. With the compensate word, thank you so much for the super chat. That's my issue with her, right? She said this, uh, the, she said the women that are winning are the ones that have working husbands and they are outsource the home labor so yes cringe oh sh yeah she wants to be treated like a princess ew i hope she stays single for her whole life or she finds her dream but she's not gonna find that dream from a man who probably isn't gonna treat her a little misogynistically how is being a princess not rooted in misogyny am i crazy how is like wanting a man to pay all your bills not rooted in misogyny? Am I crazy? Because in order for men to justify paying for a modern world, modern woman's life, they would have to think less of you. I'm so confused. I really think that. I'm not convinced. And again, that is not the same as traditional stay-at-home moms. Traditional stay-at-home moms are loved. And in my bubble, the men talk so highly of the women. Without the women, where would they be? They literally like are me like the women in my family get priority like my grandpa used to be like move your grandma needs a chair like he would be very like my grandma is everything like she's the matriarch of the family like again in my bubble where you're a stay-at-home mom you're doing it to be a good teammate your husband isn't paying your bills you and your husband are a team like in my bubble like my husband's a stay-at-home husband right now um, if he wants to get a job, great. I don't care. But like I have my job. He is 100% in charge of the house and it relieves me of so much stress so I can work seven days a week and I love my job so much. But again, like I'm not paying his bills. We are paying our bills because we make money because without him, I wouldn't be able to work seven days a week. I wouldn't have the spoons. So he's investing in my career as much as like my mom invested in my dad's career. My dad didn't have to do the home labor, still doesn't to this day, like unless my mom is in home or something. But if my mom is home, like my dad doesn't do the dishes because he works all the time. And my mom lets like her job. Just like as kids growing up, we all had chores we did. My dad is to make the money. Mine was to do dishes. My mom was to do everything the kids couldn't do. And the boys did laundry and the kids, like we all like, we were a village. Maybe it's a cultural thing, but she's Asian. What kind of Asian is she? What kind of Asian is she where she thinks she gets to be a princess? What is this, crazy rich Asians? Like, look, from one Asian to another. <laughs> I just, I feel like this, this lifestyle of wanting to be a princess is misogynistic inherently life event. But growing up is realizing that sad, painful, traumatizing life events are sometimes necessary, especially in matters of quality of life or life and death, period. I want you to take note of who the loudest voices are whenever it comes to banning no-fault divorces. The loudest voices are men. I want you to pick out the disconnect between the rhetoric that women have no value, women are so lucky to be in marriages with men, we don't deserve anything, we should be happy with the low bare minimum. And these men wanting to make women leaving them alive, illegal, and or impossible. I want you to take note of that disconnect. The math is not mathing here because- Yeah, but girl, that's what I'm saying. The Steven Crowder thing for sure, his wife should have gotten, like, I hope she gets every penny from him. But also, like, that's what men are seeing. So men are seeing, this is the men, this is the women that men are dating that are they're annoyed with. Because you want to be a princess, you want to be spoiled and taken care of. But you also, oh, this is it. Okay, she's the bubble. She's the bubble. 
Hmm. Yeah, she's not a good teammate. She's the bubble where the men feel like the women aren't even on their team. They just want to be spoiled, but they also want to be modern. But the women who truly want to be spoiled and are willing for the men to be misogynistic are better teammates. So they pick them. Mm, and this is the weird bubble that men talk about that I don't get. Okay, so she wants to be independent, but wants to be spoiled. His money is our money, but her money is her money. I'm going to guess. I'm projecting. Is that true? I'm making the assumption, not projecting. I'm making the assumption she's that girl. Is she that kind of girl? She doesn't sound like a good teammate. But the misogynistic guys that get the girls that truly are, quote unquote, submissive to them and just like let them pay for everything. Those women are at least better uh, teammates. Because they let the men do what they're going to do and they still accept the money. But she wants the money and wants to be... Wants to complain. Mm, interesting. Me trying not to be misogynistic. Women's opinions. Women's actions. Stop it. Stop it. Discord. Do you think she has many male friends? No. Just gay ones probably. She probably has a lot of gay friends. I'm assuming. I could be wrong too. I don't know. Does anyone know her content better than this? She's just like. She's not making sense. In a, Well she is making sense you know. Okay, so in that way, hmm, yeah, ooh, yeah, it's like, okay, I'm kind of getting it. Yeah, I'm all about the team. Like, we we root for the team, but I don't like the idea of the team being the woman being submissive. That doesn't make sense. What is gender? So again, I don't do submissive or, or whatever. My husband isn't submissive to me. I'm not submissive to him. We're a team. We're on the same, we're on the same page, okay? We're a team. So I don't do the like traditional red pill guys who are like, the woman needs to be submissive. Like we're in a partnership, bro. We don't have time to be submissive unless we're in the bedroom. Come on. Men don't want to give up all the benefits that women confer on them within a marriage. They want to keep doing the below bare minimum, traumatizing, mistreating their wives because they know they can't leave. No good man will ever complain about no fault divorce. I guarantee you that no good man will ever complain about no fault divorce. You know why? Because good men also want to have the option. Agree, agree to leave people who don't treat them right. Divorce allows you to regain control of your life, whether you are a man or a woman. It goes both ways. Good men will not want to be in a marriage with someone they know is miserable being married with them. It's a misogynistic man, a sadistic man, who would enjoy a marriage where the woman is miserable. Also, good men wouldn't want the same for their mothers, their sisters, their daughters. They do not want the women in their lives trapped in marriages that make them miserable. They do not enjoy seeing female suffering. So yeah, add that mm -hmm. to your list of questions. I agree with that. I agree with that. Since before you say I do. What do you think about no-fault divorce? Also, if he's been divorced, figure out who filed it because if it's not him, run. It takes a lot for a woman to file for divorce, especially women who are pregnant, especially women who have very young children. It takes a lot for those women to file. Well, hold on. Hold on. Slow down there, buddy. Like, I guess generally, maybe. I know too many good divorces, sorry. I know too many divorces where the guy didn't file for divorce and he wasn't a bad guy. So I don't know, maybe I'm lucky in that way. And to be fair, in those marriages, the guys were, um, like they're good people, so. Mm. For divorce because they have so much to lose. No woman wants for her kids to grow up in a broken home and be predisposed to a life of crime and risk poverty and all the risks that come with single motherhood. Women brave that just so they can get away from their husbands. So it is a total red flag if this divorced man that you're dating, his ex-wife filed, mm. that's a red flag. Especially if she filed when the children were little. Oof, no thank you, run. Let's get into why banning no-fault divorce is a stupid idea. On a society level, getting rid of no-fault divorce is a form of market manipulation. Call me a pragmatist, but a marriage is a business venture. It's supposed to be hard to get out of. You become business partners together. You acquire property, maybe you start a business, you invest together. Marriage is a business contract through and through. Yeah, she's too in the business. Honestly, she should date the misogynists. They all believe the same bullshit. That's what I mean. The problem with the misogynists is they do think marriage is a business contract. And it is like on the resume, you want to be compatible. I agree. Like falling in love isn't enough. You also have to be compatible with values and goals. But my resume isn't like just the business perspective. Look, again, ah, she's running into the same trap. Do you guys know the difference? Like falling in love, meaning well for your partners, doing best for the team is not the same thing as thinking it's a business contract. Like it's not the same thing. She's stuck in the same cycle the red pillars are in where they're like in competition, they're afraid of divorce, they're always thinking the legality, blah, 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 blah. Like all women, women would never leave a marriage unless she really had to. It's like, that's not true. Plenty of people with kids get divorced and they have perfectly fine divorces and they share custody perfectly fine. But if you live in the red pill world or I guess the pink world, pink pearl, pink pill world, 
like you're going to think the worst of every situation. She probably like, you know what I mean? Yeah, she's falling into the same trap. She needs to stop hanging out with misogynists, but also she needs to decide like, are you attracting them for a reason? And again, I could be so wrong with this girl's story. I don't know her, but... It always has been and it always will be. Marriage is supposed to be hard to get out of. That's why it's expensive and painful to get a divorce because divorces are not good for society. It introduces instability, but banning no-fault divorce also harms society because you don't get the highest and best use of the people who would be better off in other marriages. Marriages that instead of draining public resources, police department, CPS, court systems, public assistance, because of no-fault divorce where two legally consenting adults can dissolve a business contract, you can instead have marriages that, I don't know, are a net gain to society. Marriages that result in people buying properties together, paying property taxes, building wealth, that results in investments, providing jobs for the people around them, buying stocks and bonds, creating children that in the future will pay income tax, people that pay into the system, people that are a net gain to society. On a society level, it serves us better to incentivize marriages, but also allow for no-fault divorce. So people can try again and get into another marriage that is the highest and best use of their time, gifts, and resources. Marriages that- Man, her bubble's exhausting. I don't blame her though. She's right. Like no-fault divorce is better. But it's like a very specific bubble. Society, 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 society. I don't give a fuck about society, bro. Society is obviously not working because we're not working as individuals. Society is not going to work in a world where your whole shtick is blaming men and women. Society fails when we point the finger. Society fails when we point the finger. Unless you're pointing it at yourself. That are a net gain to society. So that's the big picture, okay? Let's talk about on a personal level. Banning no-fault divorce is plain dangerous for women. Doing so effectively traps women in marriages with men who seek to hurt them. Whether it be physically, emotionally, mentally, it traps women with below bare minimum effort men, men who make them suffer. Results follow incentives. And time. Mm, do we think she's a 2A on introspection or do we think she's a 2B with a feminist spin? Because uh, it sounds like she's in the feminist, like, anti... Because red pillars are not 2As, right? They have an ideology that's rooted in a bubble, right? I would say two A's have, uh, they're not rooted in a two bubble, but they're not introspective enough to go beyond that. But they're not rooted in the bubble. They don't actually believe it. They just play the game. But she sounds like she's rooted in the feminist bubble, right? Because fresh and fit are probably like two B's because they're rooted in the menosphere bubble. They believe it. Mm. Mm. Andrew Tate might be a 2A, though. Andrew Tate. Mm, what's his name? Tucker Carlson. He's a 2A. He doesn't believe anything. He's just here for the lulls. Time and time again, every policy that we see with stupid incentives end up with stupid results. And banning no-fault divorce is a stupid incentive system. It effectively sends a message to all men to stop trying and to make their wives' lives a difficult-to-document hell. I agree that we as a society benefit from good marriages. Good marriages. That's why we get tax benefits, health insurance benefits, all these benefits. You're saying she's anti-feminism now? Is anti-feminists who are anti-red pill the pink pill? Is that why we're calling it the pink pill? Oh my god, is she literally just the opposite of fresh and fit? She seems interested in power and that gives 2A vibes. She doesn't have um, enough introspection though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Two A's aren't two A's because they want power. Ones want power. Like some people want power. Everybody wants power. Like, no, no, no. Two A's aren't, guys, two A's aren't, let me rephrase, two A's on the introspection level aren't people who want power. They're people who have no connection to any of the bubble ideology, but aren't introspective enough to go beyond it. So they end up wanting power because what else would you want at that point? If you don't have an ideology or a bubble you connect to, power is the only answer because like, hello, like what else are you going to do with your time on earth? But two A's aren't into power because they're two a's it's just like it's most likely their default because like what else are you gonna do versus a two a might be in a bubble of ideology where it says money is the root of all evil so you end up like you know sacrificing your life to christ or some god or something so you wouldn't worship money but usually if you're in a bubble so like nothing matters it's the game of life it's the rat race there's no god there's no ideology that matters what are you gonna do make money obviously that's the only answer make money that's like the only answer you know bye sound have a good day um she's saying okay blah, blah blah i prefer i need a refresh on the 2a 2b 2c preferably by text okay so two c's are people who like live in a bubble die in a bubble but they have like a very even low understanding of their own bubble but they still live it so it's like the lowest level of introspection 
So they're in the bubble. They get how to be, but they're not really having a relationship with themselves. They're just kind of doing life. A two is a person who like understands the concept of a bubble, but like doesn't always pop it. They have an ideology. They have strong beliefs. They're usually like involved in activism or religion or structural, um, systematic structural, um, like systems. They're really, they're really ingrained in the, they understand an ideology. They like know how to rise up in the ranks of an ideology. A 2C wouldn't bother, right? 2C be chilling. Okay. A 2A is a person who has no connection to the bubbles, but isn't introspective enough to think like, what if nothing matters and it's all in the macro? Like 2As aren't going to meditate necessarily. Like she has a stick. The shtick where she goes, um, she goes, oh, you're awakened now. Like we can see, we know what's happening. Um, it's a shtick girl. If you knew what was happening, why are you making this content? Right? Nothing's happening. Humans are just being human. That's the story. That's the great grand realization that no one's going to have that. Nope. We're just doing our thing. Like it's not personal. It could be personal. It's not anything. And then the two A's again, they're people who have no connection to the bubbles or ideology. So they're like, what should I do with my time? chill they could either chill really hard chill really hard and maybe hit three because I feel like if a 2a was chill they'd hit three but not necessarily go to four but if you're a 2a who has no chill you become this society and but she could be a 2b or a 2a I don't know Survises good marriages I don't know she could be she could be either because if she's a because if she's fresh and fit she's a 2b but if she's Andrew Tate she's a 2a also I why think, I think divorce is painful and expensive Society de-incentivizes divorce. But there comes a point in a woman's life when the disrespect, the lack of care, the hostility outweighs all the promise of these benefits, outweighs all the risks of divorce. There comes mm. a point when the- So are you saying grifters are 2A since they don't believe, but they use it? Maybe. You can be a 2C that grifts, a 2B that grifts, or a 2A that grifts. The question is, why are you grifting? If you're grifting because you're a scammer and it's not within your values not to be, then no. Like you can be anything, right? You know? I wonder if a five could grift. Probably, right? If a, maybe a five. Yeah, I think a five. Well, I don't know. That seems like a waste of time. I don't know. But again, um, it's not that they're a grifter. It's why they're a grifter. Why are they a grifter? The penalties of leaving a marriage, such as predisposing your children to a life of crime and poverty, losing friendships, losing the family home, a lower quality of life, risking homelessness and poverty yourself. There comes a point when that is much preferable to being married to a man. Women don't enjoy divorce. Women risk so much getting into marriages. Women risk. She's right. You should choose better partners. Men should choose better partners. You all should choose better partners. All your partners suck. I'm just kidding. So much getting out of marriages. Women risk so much, period. And it isn't too much to ask the men who benefit from us risking everything to compensate us for those risks, to recognize and account for our risks. I know I promised you a happy ending, so let me play it. After we had our baby, that's when I fell in love, in love, it deepened. So much more to the point where I don't even think you need to be in love with someone before you marry them. So, oh, oh, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. When I was pregnant, of course, my husband was there for me. Anything I wanted, needed, he handled all the crazy cravings. He helped me with all the pain. You know, would massage my body and. Just every, you know, dealt with the pregnancy pillow and everything like that. Took me to all my appointments, came with me to all my stress tests, everything. Okay. When uh, we brought our baby home and I saw him be a father, not only that, but I saw, I experienced him taking care of me in a very vulnerable state. He's a true father, a true caregiver. Um, not only that. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Damn. I really think about it. <laughs> and he would text my friends and my family and say, I think she needs support today. I think she needs a little extra love today. He would bring me flowers. He would bring That's me my beautiful. favorite food. So when I talk about saving yourself, you know, taking birth control, not having babies that will impact the rest of your life, not giving loser men babies, the reason why is because I know that you deserve something so much more. And I know that these men are out here and they exist because I have one. Someone stitched this video about how- Okay, hold on. account for our risks. I know I promised you a happy ending, so let me play it. After we had our baby, that's when I fell in love, in love. It deepened so much more to the point where I don't even think you need to be in love with someone before you marry them. Am I crazy? That's the craziest thing. Yes, technically, some people even in arranged marriages where they never met somebody, some people can absolutely fall in love 
with a person after they get married to them. We've seen that happen countless times, especially cultures around the world do this. It can happen. But for somebody like me, absolutely not. Absolutely. Oh, my God. If I told my husband I wasn't in love with you until we got married, I think he would be shattered. I think I would break his heart. I would break my heart. It would break my heart if he married me and was like, I fell in love with you definitely after we got married. I'd be like, what? But okay, this is what I'm saying. So she settled into a relationship and then she fell in love. Is that what she's saying? This is what I mean when I say people settle. Because a lot of people do and I'm not upset with it. Settle all you want. But girl, like, mm -mm, mm -mm. like you do you Indian matchmaker. I love that show. Oh, my God. The new seasons. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. But listen to me when I say this. OK, because I, I think there's a, there's a new season coming up. Right. I'm really excited. OK, hear me out. I understand in that situation being open to it. if you're open to an arranged marriage, I'm here for you. Do it like do your thing because, you know, you're settling. No. Well, well OK, hold on. When she does arrange marriages, it's different because they meet each other. But the ones where you meet on the wedding day. That's like, okay, I'm settling and I'll grow to love you. That's fine. And then the ones where you get a matchmaker to introduce you, that's just great. That's convenient, right? Who wants to do the work? But again, like if I heard my partner say this, I think I would cry. So when but I was I'm glad she found an amazing man to take care of her and be that person. That's great. And I know that these men are out here and they exist because I have one. Someone switched this video. Yeah, but like, how did you? So. If you had one, why did it, why'd you only fall in love after you had your baby? You know what I mean? If you had this amazing man, did you not know that until you had a baby? That's so weird. Yeah, about how she knew. Before I even looked at her account, I knew. I knew. I knew. That's the only way we can find peace, ladies. The only way. We know, I know where home is now. I know. And I'm making sure my hair looks extra rough today so I can find my king. And obviously, I'm not black. Okay, but I have heard the same sentiment over and over again from women in my ethnic community. Sentiments of women divesting from their own racial groups. Why do women no longer want to date within their race? And one analysis I can share is that it all has to do with free dating market theory and monopolies. The outcomes are only Ugh. as good as the incentives and market. Oh my God, the way she talks, like what are you, what can, what is this? What's that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? What is that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? She's so business minded, girl. She's literally the opposite of fresh and fit. They all deserve each other. All these people deserve each other. All these fresh and fit, all these girlies, they all deserve each other. I swear to God, I am a nice suburban in love woman. I just love my husband and I love my life. And even though we are so unorthodox and we are not traditional, even though we are so progressive, the, f the foundation of our relationship is love and commitment and we're team players, okay? We are in love with each other. We treat each other well because we share values and we have a good marriage because of it. Bro, she's so like business minded, bro. Conditions in any racial, socioeconomic. Oh, and yeah, I'm a Syrian and I dated a, I married a Croatian because again, for him and maybe it's because, oh, to be fair, we're not twos, right? Like, okay, we're not like in a bubble. I'm not like, I didn't marry him because he wasn't, I didn't think of, like I thought about the ethnic group stuff, of course, like growing up. But all most Assyrians are religious, so I'm not going to marry an Assyrian. Let's be real here. So again, it's like, what are we doing here? Wolf of Wall Street? Yes, Wolf of Wall Street. She's like, she's like this guy. She's like, mm, how do we sell stocks? Um, how do I? Mm. Like, she's very like the business girl. Anyways, ugh. Circumstance group. When men have the monopoly on women, women suffer because there is a much lower incentive to be a good mate because they're oh going to. Oh my god! Just find somebody who loves you, bro a mate anyway obviously you will have conscientious men who will always want to be a good mate no matter what but not all men are conscientious i always tell you this is why we are the source we set the dating market and we can reset it whenever we want whenever we decide if you set the dating market then why is the patriarchy winning bitch side whenever we wake up and realize that we are the prize we are the source these men are so market driven and the moment that we are the prize we are the prize you're nothing you're nothing. We reset the dating market, things will change. Back to the topic. These men who have a monopoly on women, they no longer try to be good mates because they no longer need to be good mates. And so they have low ambition, low educational attainment, oh, low income. They don't work. They demand provision from women. All these behaviors that would make them undateable in the free dating market. All these behaviors are subsidized whenever men have a monopoly on women. Their below bare minimum behavior still allows them access to women, access to the prize in a patriarchal society because that's what women are. Women are the prize. Women are... I'm gonna I'm gonna unalive myself. 
in a Minecraft. I'm gonna die. I wanna go make out with my husband now. She's so frustrated. She's so alone. Dude. Literally, all these rules and expectations seems like it would make dating unbearable. Unbearable. The patriarchy is winning because women love the benefits. Bro. She's mad crazy. Women are not the prize. Men are not the prize. No one is the prize. You fall in love with the consciousness. There is no prize. There is falling in love with the consciousness and building a beautiful life with a healthy person. There are no prizes. There are no winning. There are no pedestals. Stop putting your partners on pedestals. Stop putting yourself on a pedestal. Stop putting relationships on a pedestal. Just have a good life. Be a good person. Fall in love with a good person. If you're lucky, you can meet them in this lifetime. Maybe you didn't cross paths. They're definitely out there. Just, bro, be a good person and fall fucking in love, bros. And treat your partners with dignity, bro. Are status symbols for the success of men in a patriarchal society. So whenever men have a monopoly on women, women become participation trophies. And the thing is, women are not participation trophies. We are the prize. It takes a lot to access a woman in the Oh my god, I'm gonna... I'll do it right now. I'm gonna do it right now. Women are not the trophy, but they are the prize. Girl, make it make sense. This is why men in the menosphere are so confused. So you want to be the prize, but you don't want to be the trophy? Make it make sense. Make it, make it make sense. Make it make sense. You want to be the prize, but you don't want to be the trophy. I'm going to. What? The dating market. But unfortunately. I love this bubble is so funny. Honestly, her and Myron should date. Her and Myron fall in love right now. Have babies. Have babies. Do it. We have created these monopolies where access to women has been devalued. And we allow it to happen. This is not a new phenomenon and it is not unique to any one racial socioeconomic circumstance group. This happens whenever any person or group has a monopoly on any person or group. It even happens in majority female universities, majority female majors, majority female offices, aka the office 10. When the female to male ratio is off and men become the rarity, the prize. Is it defined feminine energy district? Prize. <laughs> from a number sense, okay? From a number sense. When there are not many men to choose from, when the pickings are slim to begin with, men monopolize the dating market and women suffer. I will get no nuanced Nellies in the comments saying that, well, there's a a lot of reasons why men are falling behind nowadays. It's not just monopolies in the dating market. I know, but we can't ignore the one fixable thing that is wrong with a contemporary dating landscape. And it's any one group of men having a monopoly on any one group of women. Like <laughs> The thing that is missing is dignity. The thing that is missing is love, compassion, humility, but most of all dignity. There is no dignity in this conversation. There is no uplifting. There is no humanizing. There is no beauty in this conversation. This conversation is modern art. It's useless. No offense. Like, I don't merely mean that, but you know, I'm just making a joke. It's just very silly. It's so lacking in introspection. It's so shallow. This, I'm going to be very anti-Britney right now. Okay, Mama Simon would have been kind and moved you through it because Mama Simon sees you, but Auntie Britney sees you too. And I'm just going to tell you this right now, girl, you might as well date Myron because you're his twin. You might as well date Myron because you are literally proving everything he says correct, correct. Like everything Myron says, you are proving it right now with this video. You guys might as well just get married. This is insane, but she won't and he won't date her. He won't date her because she's too much of a girl boss and she won't date him because he's too much of a misogynist. But both of them only want relationships that end up making these kinds of people. Hello? You, you want to be the prize, but you don't want to be a trophy? Myron wants a girl who's exceptional, but he doesn't want her to be independent. I'm going to free. Why are you trying to focus on things that we have no control over? Why are you trying to focus on things that we cannot fix? Like, look at the things that you can fix. Start there, okay? I am so tired of no nuance Nelly's picnishas in the comments trying so hard to lick the boots of the patriarchy. For what? He girl, what do you think you're doing right now? What does she think this video is, bro? What does she literally think this video is, bro? She is literally making Myron's whole point for the patriarchy. Her whole video is making Myron's whole point for the patriarchy. What is she talking about? The idea that she thinks she... She... God bless her. She's lovely. I'd love to do a... We should have, we should have a podcast. We should have a call. Call me. We'll do a live show together. She literally is making exactly the argument for the patriarchy. How does she not see it? Like, whoa. He's not going to pick you, okay? He is not going to pick you. You know why? Because you should be doing the picking. It's time to reclaim your power and realize that Which you are- Which is a part-
that is like a part of the narrative of the patriarchy. Women are the pickers. So men have to be worthy enough to get picked. And women keep picking these men who she's upset they keep picking, but she's blaming the men for the women picking them. I'm going to. You're the source, you are the prize, you should be doing the picking. Stop trying to get picked. Stop getting mad and start getting paid. Women are the source. We are creation. We are the prize. As the group with so much to give and so much to lose, we cannot afford to allow these men to monopolize us. Obviously, you're going to date men who share your values, men who you are attracted to, men who treat you right, men who protect and provide. But if you cannot find that in your prescribed dating pool, in your current dating pool, expand. Get your education up. Get your social capital up. Get your money up. Get out of whatever bubble you're in. Oh, she said bubble. Hello. If the pickings are slim, you have feet. Move. You have the block button. Use it. Okay, this part is correct. This video is weird. That is true. You want to get out and pop your bubble. Does she know she's... Wait. Date only men who do not feel... In the are the prize. As the group with so much to give and so much to lose, we cannot afford to allow these men to monopolize us. Obviously, you're going to date men who share your values, men who you are attracted to, men who treat you right, men who protect and provide. But if you cannot find that in your prescribed dating pool, in your current dating pool, she's like building such a catch-22. Expand. Get your education up. Get your social capital up. Get your money up. Get out of whatever bubble you're She's doing it again. She's building herself up to be a modern woman that the misogynists don't want, but she wants to be a princess who's taken care of, which is what the misogynists want to do. Because again, like a modern man who primarily takes care of a woman who's independent is more progressive, but progressive men are still going, this leads to misogyny in a way. Hmm. She's creating a, she wants her cake and eat it too. And you can't have that. Like, you either got a date for love, but if you bring gender into it, if you're really playing the man versus woman game, like, you've already lost. You're in. If the pickings are slim, you have feet. Move. You have the block button. Use it. Date only men who do not feel entitled to you because they have a monopoly on you. Date only men who feel honored that you chose them. Bestie, wake up. Wow. That you chose them. Feel entitled or slim. You have feet. Move. You have the block button. Use it. Date only men who do not feel entitled to you because they have a monopoly on you. Date only men who feel honored that you chose them. Bestie, wake up. Jeez, bro. That was hella toxic and fucking, it was poetic, really. She's literally Myron's tune, bro. I'm going to title this video like Myron's, the female Myron. Like, she's going to be so upset about it, I bet. But, like, literally, what does she think she's creating? Like, what do they think they're creating with this kind of a narrative? This is why I'm so frustrated with Myron, because he talks this way about the dating schema. Modern dating is this way. This is how men have to do it. Men have to be the prize. Like, men have to understand, like, they need to pick these women. And they need to know these women are nothing. And this is what he she's doing. These men are nothing. you got to fight a man who worships you. you got to be... Ma'am. Have some dignity in your relationships. Love people for the consciousness that they are and build a good life with them because you're both good people who want to share life with each other, who want to do amazing things with each other, who want to express love and commitment to each other in a way that is about love and commitment. But no, she's very like, you know, she does this great game of playing the capitalism game and, you know, moving the patriarchy forward and all these things, bro. So funny that she's upset with women. I get it, too. Like, I'm upset with women when they're so like, I hope he picks me. I hope he picks me. Um, We don't pick anybody. We ask people nicely. Hi, I'm really into you. Would you like to date me? And then they say yes or no. It's not about picking. I didn't pick my husband up from the grocery store. He's not an object. I slid into his DMs like a good girl and I said, yo, you into me, bro? No, I didn't say that. I was like, hey, you want to talk to me? <laughs> We're just different. But literally, you know what I mean? Like I didn't, we didn't pick each other like at a grocery store. We asked each other, hi, would you like to spend life with me? And then it was like, yeah, okay, cool. And that's what we're doing, you know? She wants to be modernized but still use terms from over a century ago. Update, girl. Literally, bestie, update, bestie. Update, bestie. Bestie, update. She's just, yeah, she's like in this little bubble and I get it and I'm here for it. But man, she might as well call herself Myron. 
she might as well. I tried. I tried to give her another chance. I think we're done. We wish her the absolute best in her journey. If she ever wants to talk to me, I'll talk to her. But girl, the self-sabotage, bro. Like, I don't understand these modern women either. And look, I'm a modern. See, I'm more modern. I'm so modern, I don't believe in gender. That's how you know I'm super modern. That's what I mean when I say I'm progressive. When I say I'm progressive, I mean like gender has no meaning in my marriage. It doesn't mean anything. It just doesn't mean anything. It only means something when we're interacting with the bubbles. It means absolute nothing in this marriage. You know what I mean? So when when this woman, you know, if you consider yourself a progressive, but you're still playing these games of like men versus women, like how progressive are you? When I say I'm progressive, I mean like what is gender? It just doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, that was interesting. There you go. Check out her channel. I'll link it. You guys can go and check her out. There it is, baby. Stuck in my head, in real life while in bed, my belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool